Lightning flashed across the sky as Andy ran into his room with an armful of toys. A huge thunderstorm had hit, and RC was still outside. When Andy went downstairs for dinner, Woody headed to Andy's sister's room to search for the lost toy from the windowsill. Bo! Situation? Woody explained that RC was trapped in the mud. Luckily, they had a plan. Operation Pull Toy! Slinky Dog stretched out his springy body as Woody scrambled down his back to rescue RC. Moments later, though, Andy's mom came to get Bo and her sheep. Andy's sister Molly was giving them away. Woody snuck over to Bo as she stood in the cardboard box. He wanted to help her escape and take her back to Andy's room. But Bo was ready to go. Woody, I'm not Andy's toy. It's time for the next kid. Years passed, and eventually, a much older Andy gave his toys to a little girl named Bonnie. She loved them as much as Andy had, but things were different for Woody. He wasn't the favorite toy anymore. When Bonnie was ready for her first day of kindergarten, Woody still decided to go with her, just in case she needed him. At craft time, Bonnie got upset when a little boy took her art supplies. So Woody came to her rescue when her head was turned. He quickly gathered more supplies, including a spork from a wastebasket to cheer Bonnie up. She put some googly eyes on the spork and named him Forky. She even wrote her name on the bottom of his foot just as she had with Woody. By the end of the day, Bonnie decided to take him home. We got this kindergarten thing under control, eh? I can't believe I'm talking to a spork. <laughs> but suddenly, Forky sat up. <gasps> Back in Bonnie's room, Woody introduced Forky to the other toys. Bonnie made a friend in class. She literally made a new friend. Everyone, I want you to meet Forky. But wide-eyed Forky was not interested in being a toy. Trash, trash, trash. He was made from trash. Woody explained. I know this is a little strange, but you gotta trust me on this. Forky is the most important toy to Bonnie right now. The next morning, Bonnie and her family were going on a road trip. She loaded up the RV with her toys, including her new favorite, Forky. Woody decided it was his responsibility to watch out for the spork. He knew Bonnie would be heartbroken if she ever lost Forky. But one evening, Buzz Lightyear broke the news to Woody that Forky was climbing out of the moving RV. Oh no, Forky, Forky, I am not a toy, I'm a spork. The plastic utensil jumped out the window. Woody knew what he had to do. He had to follow him. Woody found Forky alone on the highway. Thankfully, he was fine, but they had to walk the rest of the way to the Grand Basin RV park where Bonnie and her family were staying. They were almost there when Woody spotted Bo Peep's lamp in a store window. Bo? 
The antique shop was closed, but Woody and Forky slipped through the mail slot to investigate. Inside, they met a doll in a stroller being pushed by a ventriloquist dummy. <laughs> Woody apologized for bothering them. Why, you're not a bother at all. We were just out for my early morning stroll. And look, <laughs> we met you. My name is Gabby Gabby, and this is my very good friend, Benson. Oh, uh, Woody, pleasure to meet you. This is Forky. But Gabby Gabby wasn't all that interested in Forky. Instead, she pointed at the voice box sewn into Woody's chest. You have what I need. Right inside there. Gabby Gabby's dummies chased Woody and Forky through the store. Luckily, Harmony, the store owner's granddaughter, came in and Woody saw his chance to escape. He pulled his string, stopping the dummies in their tracks. Harmony saw Woody and scooped him up, taking him outside to the playground. While Woody was glad he had escaped, he knew he needed to go back to get Forky. Just then, a busload of campers overran the playground. Woody climbed into a sandbox to hide, but it was crowded with lost toys that couldn't wait to be played with. In the middle of the mayhem, Woody saw Bo Peep and her sheep being played with by another kid. Whoa! Bo gave Woody a big hug. Oh, I can't believe it! The two friends couldn't have been happier to see each other. But Woody felt sad when he learned that Bo was a lost toy. How long have you been out on your own? Seven fantastic years. Woody was confused. What could be so fantastic about being a lost toy? Don't worry, cowboy. Soon you'll realize it's the best thing that ever happened to you. Bo introduced Woody to her friend, Officer Giggle McDimples. Woody hoped Giggle and Bo could help him rescue Forky. Please, Bo, my kid really needs this toy. All right, all right. We'll help you get your toy. Meanwhile, back at the family RV, Buzz jumped out to look for his friend. As the Space Ranger was searching for Woody, he passed a carnival. A worker picked him up and strapped him to a wall of prizes. Above him was a pair of stuffed animals, Ducky and Bunny. Come on, help me get out of here. Instead of helping Buzz, Ducky started kicking him. But the plush got his webbed foot stuck in the Space Ranger's gear. In his struggle to free his foot, Ducky accidentally freed Buzz. The three toys tumbled to the ground. As Buzz took off looking for Woody, Ducky and Bunny followed closely behind. Bo told Woody they could get into the store through the roof, but they'd have to get to higher ground. Once there, Bo explained to Woody that she and her friends were leaving in the morning. Wait, you're leaving? Woody was baffled. The lost toy way of life just didn't make sense to him. Gosh, Bo, I mean, what happened to you after Andy's? You know how it goes. The little girl grew up, didn't need me anymore, so... Who needs a kid's room when you can, you can have all of this? A short time later, Buzz spotted Woody and Bo on the roof of the antique store and climbed up to join them.
Bo knew that rescuing Forky would be tricky. Everyone would have to work together. The group snuck through the store, behind bookcases and shelves. Bo pointed to a glass cabinet across the way. That's most likely where your Forky is being kept. Getting to it meant crossing a wide aisle that was patrolled by Dragon, the shop's tough-looking cat. <gasps> Just then, Bonnie and her mom walked in. Woody had to get Forky fast. He ran across the aisle and climbed up to the cabinet, but it was locked. Gabby Gabby's dummies surrounded the toys. Bo and her sheep fought them off, but they captured Bo's sheep too. Now Gabby Gabby had Forky and the sheep. What did I say to you? I lead, you follow. Bo needed to come up with a new plan. She took Woody to meet Duke Kaboom, Canada's greatest stuntman. Duke, meet Woody. We need your help. Gabby Gabby has his toy and my sheep. So, here's the plan. We need to jump over the aisle to Gabby's cabinet and you are the toy to do it. Duke wanted no part of it. He remembered how badly he disappointed his kid when he failed to make the jump seen on TV commercials. That was long before, and Duke hadn't jumped since. Be the Duke you are right now, the one who jumps and crashes. Duke's confidence returned. He'd do the jump. Woody looked at Bo. You know, you've handled this lost toy life better than I could. You have this way of making a toy see the best in themselves. I think you'd make a great lost toy. When Duke was all set up for the jump, Woody learned he'd be riding along. Yeah, yeah, you jump over, I zip line down, retrieve my sheep, you get your forky, and we're out. True to form, Duke eventually lost control of his motorcycle and crashed to the floor. Woody had time to jump off the bike and scramble up the cabinet while Buzz pulled the zip line tight. Then, Duke distracted Dragon while Bo, her sheep, Buzz, Woody, Ducky, and Bunny escaped. But Forky was still in the store. Woody urged everyone to help him rescue Forky, but the toys were banged up and hurt. No one was in the mood to rush back in and face Gabby Gabby and Dragon for a spork. Bo was upset that Woody was being so single-minded, so she led her lost toys back to the carnival. Woody went back into the store alone to find Forky, but instead came face to face with Gabby Gabby. Hello, Woody. She said she knew Woody would return. You don't know me. Oh, but I do. Left in the closet, feeling useless, wondering if you'll ever get played with. Woody listened as she explained how her voice box had never worked properly. It made her sad to admit she'd never been any kid's favorite toy. I'd give anything to be loved the way you have. Woody understood how she felt, so he made a decision. He'd give her his voice box and get Forky in return. Woody's voice box was a perfect match for Gabby Gabby's record. Woody was excited for her. This might be her chance to find a kid to love. He could hear sounds of children playing outside. One of those voices out there is your kid. We just have to find him. Gabby Gabby wanted to believe Woody, but she'd been alone so long, she wasn't sure any kid could love her. Right now, 
I'm an old rag doll that's been lost, chewed on, burned, ripped apart, thrown away, forgotten, who understands just one thing. I was made to help a child, any child. So Woody encouraged her to be who she was right then too. Bo heard what Woody said, and she was so proud of her friend. All the toys came together to help a little girl find Gabby Gabby. She finally had a kid to love. Woody and the other toys made their way back to Bonnie's RV. Everyone was happy to see Woody, and he was even happier to see Bonnie reunited with Forky. He had done the job he'd set out to do. It was then he realized that there were kids and toys everywhere who would always need his help. Woody knew that wherever he went and whichever toy he helped next, he'd always have his friends by his side. To infinity and beyond.